Hello again everyone, Saki here and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program and today we have a little bit of a tutorial. This is geared for people who have gotten out to the moon and gotten out to Mimbus, but as far as going out past Kerbin's sphere of influence, say to uh, Duna or Eve, Moho, any of these planets in the outer ring, if you're having some difficulty there, just follow along. Um, if you've gotten out to the moon and you've gotten out to Mimbus, then getting out to these other planets just requires a little bit more uh, planning and finesse, but the principles are still the same, so don't be too disheartened. We will be playing in a sandbox mode and I will be using a stock craft that you will have access to, so you will have the exact same craft as me. So let's go ahead and plot an initial approach to Duna. So the very first step in either going outside of Kerbin's Sphere of Influence or going inside Kerbin's Sphere of Influence is your launch window. And we can see Kerbin here, the uh, aqua blue dot, and each one of the planets is represented by a dot here uh, in their orbit. And the most important thing to save fuel is to launch your spacecraft from Kerbin and escape while you can increase your orbit or decrease your orbit to meet the planet uh, at its most opportune time. Basically, uh, as you thrust, the orbit will become more elliptical. Uh, you've perhaps seen this. If you burn at your periaps, your apoaps will increase higher and higher and higher. And the more you thrust, the more elliptical it becomes until you thrust so much that you leave Kerbin's sphere of influence. If you want to get out to Duna, for example, just like getting out to the moon, you want to increase your orbit higher. Um, Duna is right here, this red orbit. Kerbin is the aqua, meaning we need to increase our, uh, our orbit altitude outward. So if we think about Kerbin as a central starting point, we want to burn prograde. That is, make sure that the ellipse grows outward, and then we will fling out and meet Duna by the time uh, it gets out to our highest point. Conversely, if we were going to Eve or Moho, we would want to lower our orbit relative to Kerbin, so we would be firing retrograde. We would be accelerating backwards, essentially, and bringing that uh, elliptical orbit down and down and down until we intersect that planet at our highest point. Now, because planets on the inside of Kerbin are rotating much, much faster than Kerbin, uh, we'll have to wait until they're behind us. Uh, because in the travel time, uh, they will be speeding along. We will just be uh, nice and slow on the outside, and these plants will be zipping right on by, and then we will meet them at their point. Conversely, these planets on the outside of Kerbin's orbit are moving slower than Kerbin, so we actually want Kerbin to be behind that orbit. So, for example, Duna needs to be at a 45 degree angle in front of Kerbin to launch effectively. Uh, you can Google Kerbin transfer windows or KSB transfer windows, and it will tell you exactly what angle the Kerbin to Sun to target planet should be. And Duna is 45 degrees, meaning we can draw a line from Kerbin to the Sun 45 degrees out, meaning if Duna was right here right now, that would be the ideal time to launch. If it isn't, you can always accelerate to 100,000 uh, times regular speed, and you can see Kerbin is catching up to Duna slowly but surely. If I use the right mouse button to ensure that the plane between the Sun and Kerbin is even, you can see that we are catching Duna. So I will go ahead and fast forward until Duna is about 45 degrees from Kerbin to Sun and Duna. All right, we're catching up to Duna. As you can see, it's under 90 degrees now. I'm just using my right mouse button and pulling my mouse to the left, keeping Kerbin and the sun even. And we're getting right about the time where we need to go back to normal speed as Duna will be at about the 45 degree mark, let's say right there. So from here to the sun to Duna is about 45 degrees. This is our launch window. Let's go ahead and load a craft to use. And like I said, we'll be using a stock craft that comes with KSP. We'll click on the launch pad and look for the Kerbal X stock. 73 parts in eight stages. Doesn't really matter um, what 
uh, what crew we have, this is just to get you out there. So we will go ahead and launch the vessel. Now, as I said, this is assuming you can already get out to the moon and Minmus, meaning that you know how to do a proper launch. So I'll go ahead and time lapse this launch and we're gonna shoot for a 100,000 uh, meter orbit pretty much on the equator. So we're gonna be launching straight to the 90 out to 100,000 meters. So three, two, one, let's go. All right, looking at our Apo apps here, we're gonna cut when we hit 100K. So five, four, three, two, one, we'll cut. And now we'll glide on up and uh, circularize. All right, so now that we've launched, we are at about a 45 degree angle from Duna, as I said. So what we want to do is increase our relative orbit compared to the sun. Right now we are moving with Kerbin. We and Kerbin are one, so essentially this is also our orbit. We want to get out to Duna that has a higher orbit, meaning we want to accelerate and expand our ellipse to reach up to Duna. So that means a burning in the direction that the planet is traveling, which means we need to burn on the backside here, add the maneuver, and push our apoaps in that direction. You will see that we will leave Kerbin's sphere of influence pretty much right along this banner. What we can do is we can adjust this time just a little bit and we wanna go out to about 1,000 meters per second is what you need to get out to Duna. We'll scroll out and see what that's done. As you can see, our apoaps isn't quite up to Duna's orbit. So if you can't get your, um, your prograde marker, you can push in on the retrograde for finer detail. So that's what I do. I'm pushing in the, the retrograde marker and we can almost see a one and a half million kilometer approach. Uh, we can try to adjust our timing here and see what that does. And you can see just if we wait too long, we're actually going in the other way. You can see if we're burning uh, more closer to the sun, that's going to mess everything up. And we're almost there, 1.4 million. This might be close enough that we might be able to Frankenstein something. Um, ideally, we want to meet it at its apoaps. That will be the, the ideal. But unfortunately, we're going to be uh, too early. Uh, we are going to be here and Dune is going to be here. Uh, it's going to fly right on by. So we, we waited a little bit too long, it looks like, but we can adjust our radial in and radial out nodes and couple that with increases or decreases in speed. So we can, we, you can sort of see we're walking it back in. So 663, so that was that radial node there. Then we add a little bit more retrograde. Then we'll add a little bit more and a little bit more retrograde. And we're slowly walking those two uh, nodes together. Keep in mind, we're using a little bit more speed, but the fact that we're turning retrograde at the same time as we're going radial out, we're sort of making up for it. And there we go. So 1200 meters per second, we have an encounter with Duna. It's going to be a 40 second burn in 14 minutes. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and right click past our, or left click past our node, warp to the next maneuver. That will send us around and then we don't have to worry about missing our node because it's going to automatically slow down right before we get there. SAS on, point to our maneuver node and we want to burn at T minus 20. So I will go ahead and complete that burn and then we'll uh, do some refining once we leave Kerbin, Kerbin's sphere of influence. One thing that we have to be very careful of is look at our parry. It's getting close to that 70K mark. So that's why it's good to start at a higher altitude because you do not want to use a maneuver node and then fire directly back into the atmosphere while you're maneuvering. So that will be maneuver done and we're 4.8 thousand meters above the atmosphere. So we will be fine and we will be on our way. We are not launching directly in line with the planet's orbit, we had to do that radial maneuver a little bit, but as you can see, we are still on for an encounter. So what we will do is we will fast forward until we get to about here, and then we will do some fine tuning where we can actually choose where we arrive in Duna's sphere of influence. 
So the reason I'm waiting for Kerbin Escape is so that it can sort of recalculate our approach to Duna. And I don't want to cross that threshold at time acceleration. That's the old player in me. Um, keeping the simulation uh, calculated as best as it can as it passes through. And you can sort of see that we've got a little bit of a blip. What we can do is left click on Duna and focus view. And we can see where we are going to be coming in relation to Duna. As you can see, we're going to be sort of low and we're going to be sort of outside. Um, this is the part where I think a lot of players struggle is they ask, how do I get this closer? Well, if we make our maneuvers out here, the better off we're going to be. We're not going to be using a whole lot of fuel. For these, what I do is I go back to my craft, I go back to my engine, and I turn the thrust limiter right down to, say, 2 to 5. That way, if we go full power, we're not going to overcook in case something goes bad. So I'll hit map mode again, focused on Duna. I'll bring up my nav ball. And first thing that I can see is we're going to be low. So SAS on, that's going to be a normal burn. This is what I call faffing about. We're just going to give it a little bit of thrust and we're going to see what happens to the numbers. And as you can see, the periaps is shrinking. And we want to get close to Duna. So now that I'm happy with that, I'll go full power. Keep in mind, this is at 5% thrust. And we want to get pretty much on the equator. This is where you can also do a non-equatorial orbit if you want to do like a polar orbit. This would be the time that you can adjust your orbit to fly over the poles. Uh, but we're going to pretty much bring that in line. And then we're going to kill the throttle. As that's pretty much on orbit. So what that means is we have no inclination to do. Now we just need to speed up or slow down. Well, what? which one is it? Unless you're an astrophysicist and you, want, and you don't know what you need to do, what I do is I go, I just pick prograde. And then I just watch this, or this periaps number, give it a little bit of thrust and see what happened. As you can see, those numbers are going down. We're at 27.3. So I'll give it full thrust, watch what happens, watch this orbit shrink, and if it does start to grow at any point, I stop and I change direction. You can sort of see we're losing our inclination a bit. It, it's sort of drifting up. So I'm going to get as close as I can without these numbers going up. And you can sort of see how it's slowing down. The, the amount of change wasn't as, as fierce, and it started going up at 12.8 million. So now... We're going to go anti-normal and point back down and we're going to watch and see what happens. And as you can see, the periaps decreases once more. We'll go full power. We'll bring that right down and we're going to just sort of walk it in. And I'm doing this at 5% thrust. So we're not using a whole lot of delta V for this massive amount of change. If we tried to do these maneuvers as we enter Duna's sphere of influence, I don't know if we would have enough Delta V. All right, so prograde worked for us last time. Let's go back to prograde and see what happens. And indeed, those numbers are going down. So we're going to go full power until they... So they started to increase right there that you saw. In order to get that back, we'll flick retrograde. And we'll just squeeze a little bit of fuel until we see those numbers stop and then start to increase. So we're good on radial in it or prograde and retrograde. We're good on the normal and anti-normal for our inclination. All that's left is radial in and radial out. So let's go radial out and see if that affects. And as you can see, that immediately started pushing our periaps too high. So we'll go radial in. That will flip it around and we'll give it the beans. And as you can see, that peri the periaps is decreasing a ton. And we're bringing that right down to about a million meters. Now we can zoom in and really fine tune our approach. If we wanted to go over the poles, this would be the time for us to do that. We could keep on thrusting and as you can see, stop right there, now we are in a polar orbit. Now if we didn't want to do that polar orbit and we want to come in in line with the rotation of the planet, we need to undo what we did. So that means radial out. We will thrust until our periaps gets to the outside of the atmosphere. And then, of course, we're going to go anti-normal, point our orbit down, and thrust until our periaps gets pretty much on the equator. And then we're going to bounce between those two to refine this orbit. 
Push out a bit. Anti-normal down. Thrust. And now our periapse is near the equator and you can sort of see right there we're level. At 119,000 meters. Now that we are on inclination and we have our approach to the planet set, we can go prograde and retrograde to speed up or slow down. So if we wanted to come right into the atmosphere, we'll slow down and then we'll go radial in and bring that right down. And now that we're above the equator, we'll go anti-normal down and we'll thrust until we get the equatorial orbit. And now we are set. We don't have to touch a thing from here on out till our Duna encounter. So SAS off so we don't use up any battery. You make sure that your solar panels are facing the sun. And from then on, it is up to you. Do you want to uh, do an aero capture where you just barely skim the surface of that atmosphere, slow yourself down naturally without having to thrust? Do you want to sort of use this and hope that this gravity turn gets you in line with Ike? I didn't plan on that, but that's what we've got here. Uh, and you can sort of see if you wanted an Ike encounter, oh, well, all I have to do is increase my normal and that will get us in line. Oops, nope, it didn't. So anti-normal, we're going to point down, increase our thrust until we're right in line. And now we have an equatorial approach with Ike that's going to shoot us in front. Okay, if we don't like that, we'll radial out. And now we flip on the backside of Ike. And now we will pass over Ike at 25,000 meters, passing over Duna at 150. So we're using a gravity assist to redirect us, and then we can get an Ike capture. That's up to you. So you can sort of use this to see uh, gravity assist to see what's going to happen. Uh, and once we get past this orbit here, if we didn't touch it, we would curve around. And once we got out of Ike's sphere of influence, we would see what would happen to our overall, our overall orbit and what happened there. So that is essentially uh, plotting interstellar planetary approaches using the, uh, the finagling mo mode. Uh, before you get to Duna, of course, make sure to turn on your thrust to 100% so you are ready to do your full maneuvers when you get there. But that will do it for me and this episode, everyone, of Kerbal Space Program. I hope it was informative. Looks like the Kerbals liked it. Uh, but like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you in the next Kerbal Space Program video. Take care.